I'm talking today to Sue Golifer, Professor Sue Golifer at the University of Brighton. Sue, um, people use various terms for the, the subject we're interested in, you know, digital art, uh, new media art, net art, computer art. Do you have any strong feelings either for or against any of these? No, I think they are all, they are all useful terms, and I don't know whether there's the one, one answer to it all. Um, I suppose digital arts is, is one terminology, but I say as Executive Director of ISEA International, we call it electronic arts, mm -hmm. which is, was deemed to be you know, old-fashioned but seems to have come full circle, mm. surprisingly. Um, and I run a Master's in Digital Media Arts, mm. So for my sins, um, I'm based in the School of Media, mm. whereas I think I should be in the School of Art. So if I'd missed off the media, I, would, yeah. I may be in a totally different school, but that's yeah. another story, really. Yeah. Um, it, with my own work, I just like to think I'm an artist who produces art rather mm. than actually mm. categorise myself. Mm. Mm. Would, you, would you like to tell me something about your, your own contribution to the art world? Because mm. uh, you, you, I mean, you, as well as being an artist, you've also been, played quite a role in administration and being on various committees and this sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I, you know, for, for better or worse, I seem to do a lot of stuff about digital arts for everybody else except for myself at the moment. <laughs> but, but I did start off obviously as an artist. Um, I. Um, was a student at um, Lanchester Poly, mm -hmm. where art and language started in my mm -hmm. year, which is an interesting area of, mm -hmm. of um, you know, an ism, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I worked with um, another student on the course, so we signed each other's work. And my work is always in cap lock, so nobody really knows what sex I am, and, <laughs> and nobody knows who did it, mm -hmm. which has actually come full circle, if mm -hmm. you think of, uh, net art, put it mm, that way. Mm. Um, and one of the things that we were really interested in was, um, I suppose you could think of the analogy of, of Victor Vassarelli's work, mm -hmm. where there's a sort of alphabet of colour and shapes and mm, forms. Mm. So I was a mi minimalist, systems-based artist mm. when I was at, at um, university. And then I moved to London, and I, and I know Paul Brown, who you've probably interviewed, and cybernetic serendipity mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. you know, clicked all my boxes with me. And I came down here to do a postgraduate in specialist printmaking, and I was working quite a lot with Sussex University, even though I was based at the University of Brighton. And these guys were in the computer science department, and I said, oh, I really, really want to, you know, work with computers after seeing the exhibition, um, and I want to learn coding. Mm. Um, and they went, no, not going to work. <laughs> You're a woman <laughs> and an artist, not going to work. No, no, no. You know, it's too expensive. And, you know, so I went, hmm, I have to rethink this here. So one of my terminologies is I say that not only am I an artist that is a pure scientist, but I'm also an, an artist who turned herself into a computer. <laughs> yes, you, 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 you talk just, oh, you mean you, you, you actually worked out yeah. equations by hand or, yeah, or yeah. I see. I used to do a lot of drawing mm -hmm. using various different systems, particularly Fibonacci, mm -hmm. to program my work to enable me to cut stencils for screen printing. Right. And I liked screen printing because it was very flat. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't expressive by any means because mm -hmm. that wasn't what mm -hmm. the nature of my work was about. Mm -hmm. My work was just exploring the nature mm -hmm. of, of colour, shape and form. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you were, you were signing works with somebody else. Was there mm. this? I mean, there was a movement, wasn't there, in, in the, the 60s, uh, in, in, in uh, it's, it's chronicled by Armin Medosh in his book on, on the, uh, I forget what it's called now, but anyway, movement for people to do anonymous art, to do art as a group. Mm. Was this consciously? Yeah, we. I mean, <coughs> I, I mean, the guy that I worked with, um, he went off. He went off to, to America, mm. and I had a contract with a gallery in Bond Street to mm. produce screen prints. Um, and they said, we don't think it was you that was doing all the work. And, and I said, you know, thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and in actual fact, it was kind of weird because we exhibited our own both our work for the final degree show, which was which was the same, and he got a first and I got a two one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And then even signing it, he was called Wetton and I was called Golifer, but his name came before mine. <laughs> <laughs> there was sort of discrimination in there somehow yes, or other. Yes. But anyway, so I then carried on and all my work is, is uppercase, just San Golifer still now. How, how long did it actually take before, before you, you stopped being a, you know, 
a lone pioneer and be became a, a computer artist and was accepted as a computer artist by the art world or the academic yeah, world? Yeah, well, I think it was um, <coughs> in the... When, when, I, when Apple, Apple Max came mm -hmm. into, you know, Mac classics, do you remember the little cubey thing? <laughs> and I went, oh my God, this is what I always wanted to do. Um, and then I, I've been an academic, taught for many years, lots of different universities, printmaking <coughs> in many guises mm. to different students at different levels. And I also taught on foundation um, full time which was difficult for me because I always thought of as an artist who taught rather than somebody who was a, an academic who made art occasionally. Mm, mm, it was mm. a kind of switch on. Um, and they closed the foundation course down here and I had to be redeployed. So I moved back into printmaking, which is my home for mm -hmm. undergraduate, which was fine mm. for me. But then the head of school said, oh, I didn't realize you were full time. I don't know what to do with half your time. <laughs> and then at the time, um, John Vince, I don't know, and Colin Bearden, Kind of quite, quite pioneers mm -hmm. as well, early before their time. Um, and they had started a, um, a centre called the Rediffusion Simulation Research Centre. Mm -hmm. And I moved into there representing, um, it was taking people from um, the four schools within our, our faculty. And I represented the School of Art. And my research was looking at the relationship of computer technology in relationship to teaching, really teaching and learning and how it would change the nature of fine art practice mm. because of computers. So I had, you know, I had, luckily I had time, which I don't have anymore, <coughs> to actually really, really look into the whole, whole thing of what was happening in relationship to programming, mm. not, not programming in coding, but, you know, Adobe software such as Photoshop mm. and Super Paint and all those other ones. And do you want me to carry on? You've got time? Please, yes. yes. Okay. So um, we decided within our little group in, in, the, in this research centre to set up an exhibition, which was called, I meant an exhibition, um, a conference, which was Computers in Art and Design Education. Mm. And um, because I'd been bleating on to Colin Bearden, who was my professor there, mm. about wanting to do an exhibition of, of prints that somehow or other had been computer generated, mm. um, I was allowed to set up an exhibition that was called Arcade. Mm -hmm. And it had many guises in very different um, locations throughout England and Europe and Russia as well, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and, and alongside that, I was actually also teaching my students. You're, you were researching into how computers can change the teaching of art and of art practice. Um, that seems to have... It's, it's, it's a thing which a lot of people have discussed over the last 50 or 60 years. But opinions seem to have changed enormously during that period. You know, at the start, people believed it would change it totally. Mm. There'd be no more art, it would all mm. be done by machines. But, um, what conclusions did you come to? I, I think it's just another awful word, tool. Mm -hmm. It's just another mm -hmm. mechanism to produce work, and it suits some people and not others. But I think, I mean, if you think of any exhibition, whether it take modern Britain or anywhere, you know, that, that some of it, computing is in there, even as it's QR code or printing the caption or, mm -hmm. or, the, or, the, or you know, the catalogue or something, you know, mm -hmm. the, and the, the website and the social media. That I mean, it is just part of, you know, I, I gave many, many um, presentations about... Um, computing and printmaking actually because I say I was probably one of the early pioneers of, of mm. looking at that because in the early 90s you could produce great work in Photoshop or I say super paint or whatever but it was still on the screen mm. and how you actually got it from the screen yes. actually physically yes. into whatever practice that mm. you're working with you know and then obviously now you know we're talking about 3D aren't we in mm. virtual reality and augmented reality we hadn't even thought about yes. in those days yes. but um and I suppose I learned an awful lot from going to ACM SIGGRAPH. I've been going there since the um, late 90s as well. And in their emerging technologies, seeing, mm. as, as I say, augmented re reality and nobody n knowing quite what to do with it. Mm. Mm. And it comes to full circle, so VR is there. But yeah, I, I mean, so anyway, I produced Arcade. Um, and really, basically, the mission was it was a print, a physical print, <coughs> that could be framed and hung on a wall, mm. but somehow or other, somewhere along the line, it had been computer generated. Mm. Mm. 
And the problem with generative art is it raises so many questions about authorship and about the role of the individual artist, which is presumably hmm. partly why you were <laughs> signing things jointly. Yes, which I didn't realise at the time, oh, but right. yes. <laughs> but I suppose I did, because it is, it is authorship, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, Phil and I used to say, well, does it matter who did it? Mm -hmm. it it's the work that matters, not, not mm -hmm. who did it. Mm -hmm. You know, there is that awful feeling as though, you know, um, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, there are other things I can talk about, like the Designer and Artist Copyright Society mm. and, and mm. copyright and things, because it is this, this quite complex, you yes. know, when you've got many iterations of the yes. same thing, and which is a real one. Yes. And particularly when you have uh, conceptual artworks where the, the, the work itself arguably doesn't exist in any way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a nightmare for con copyright lawyers, and, or brings in a lot of money for them. Mm. But, um, but did you find that... Uh, or, or do you find that the, the, the art, the art world, quote unquote, is now more accepting of, of firstly of digital art, but, but also of, of generated art where, you know, the, the, it, this question of who, who did it, who the artist is, the personality of the artist is, is, is less salient? Yeah, I mean, I think I go back to Dax because Dax actually obviously works with, um, you know, major galleries and mm. things, and, and when the art auctions and things like that, and they mm. do actually want something physical to sell. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so there is still a need, I think, for <coughs> actual... F yes. I'm, I'm a 2D artist, although, I, you know, I run a master's in digital media arts, and I'm in a room now where my students just presented work, and it's kind of quite weird. It's full of furniture in here, <laughs> not artworks, and, <laughs> and none of it would be 2D work. But I think, you know, I, I, I hang mm. on to my roots one way or another. Mm. Um, so it's quite saleable because mm. um, it still exists, <coughs> which is what you, you were talking about, you know, the copyright, really. Mm. Yes. But there again, I can produce it in lots of different sizes. I can do mm. miniature prints, mm. you know, prints on canvas, the same yes. image, you know. Um, I think I'm losing the plot here. <laughs> it's it very interesting. I mean, the, the ways that, that people um, have, have, have uh, the, the, the trade, and particularly the art trade, have generated monetizing art, digital artworks, you know, um, even if it's at the simplest, it's just producing a photograph and getting the artist to sign it, and that's oh, something don't. you can sell. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think back to things like Lowry's particularly, when mm. you commercially printed mm. lithos that, that weren't individually mm. signed or anything, mm. you think, things like that. Mm. Um, yeah, there was something I was trying to think about, but, oh, I know, um, after I, w after I, it changed from the Rediffusion Simulation Research Centre to the Centre for Computers mm. and Creative Work. Mm. And then after that, um, I was the manager of a thing called CTI, which is a computer teacher initiative right. in higher education. Right. And I, I, I was played by Hefke to represent the whole of the art and design mm -hmm. academics and, and um, give them advice and support about how they, how they um, use computing within, mm -hmm. within their practice. Mm -hmm. So that was, so yeah, I mean, yes. I had a small unit of staff yes. that helped me and we ran workshops and travelled throughout the UK really. Mm. Um, and I mentioned going to Russia. Mm. Um, I went into a place called Novosibirsk, which mm. had been a closed city. It's got seven universities wow. um, and it had been closed, but, um, oh God, who's, who's, the, who's the guy who did all the finance? Um, had a lot of money and anyway, he put in internet access to, um, all, all the major museums in Russia, so they could never be closed again. Oh. So somebody emailed me um, and said, "Sue, so we'd like we'd like Arcade to come mm. to Novosibirsk in the major gallery out oh. here." And it was one of those wintry, dark days, and I went, "Yeah, you can have it, but you have to have me as well." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I took this exhibition, rolled up in tubes, and, and um, in a portfolio to Siberia via via Moscow. Um, and I met now my great friend Andre, who I didn't know, yeah. and his brother Vladimir, yeah. in, in a city that nobody signed me into, and so nobody knew I was there, and I was also staying in a hotel with no name. Wow. <laughs> um, yes. And I've been there many times, really. They actually yeah. cry when I, when I turn up, and they said, oh, you changed our lives, so... <laughs> But, uh, I mean, there are lots of stories, that, nice examples of meeting people through that, you know. Yes, yes. How were your own artworks received? Did it, did it take a long time before you, you actually got anything into a gallery? Any, any of your... No, I was very lucky. When I was in my early, early 20s, I mm -hmm. had something in Young Contemporaries. I had um, a contract with a gallery in Bond Street. Mm -hmm. I had an exhibition at the Serpentine. Mm -hmm. um, I saw my work all over the world. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <clears throat> I think it was downhill from then on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when you when you sell your work, do you, do you do you know who you've sold it to? I mean, is there an ongoing relationship between the artist and her, her collectors? Or well, it's it, I mean, I have things in public collections yes. in, in major museums mm -hmm. throughout the world, really. But it's only now, <laughs> in my, my old age, people come back to me and they say, "Oh, I've, you know, I've got this print here." And what they want to know is if it's valuable and if I'm really famous. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can't even, re even remember doing it. <laughs> so those are the yeah. only connections yes. I have, really. Yes. Um, and then obviously, <coughs> sometimes people want to digitise mm. things, mm. you know, and, and I have to give them permission mm. to do that because mm. if whatever copyright or whatever ownership oh. it, it is, my I'm, I still have the copyright mm -hmm. for it. So Dax owns my copyright. Mm. So if people get in touch with me, they want to put my work in a book mm. or... Um, that they want to put it online, I get them to, to be in touch with DAX. Mm -hmm. And we have sister organisations as well. Mm -hmm. So if my work is sold, I get some payback for it. Not very much. Mm -hmm. And I also get distribution money for the copyright licensing agency mm -hmm. if it's used in an, an article. Mm -hmm. So I get bits of money mm -hmm. because um, <coughs> payback is called Dwa de Suite, mm -hmm. which means that uh, if, you, if you bought one of my prints with 20 quid, mm -hmm years and years ago, it was a lot more than that then, but anyway, um, and then you put it in an auction and it went for over, I can't remember, it's a thousand pounds or maybe, yeah, which is difficult with mine because they are prints, uh. you know, um, I get, I get that, those royalties back to me, Fidax. That's interesting. I mean, it, it, it's, it does look as though, it, I don't know if you saw, there was an ex ex exhibition at the Mayor Gallery in London of some of the very early generative artists, and they still be on, and they were now starting to sell for, you know, I mean, £3,000 or something like that for, for an A4 sheet. Um, and it does look as though th th that sort of price is starting to be achieved now. Well, that's why I think I'm going to retire from here and go and get sort my life out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just keeping me getting these agent emails saying, Sue, can you hand me a higher resolution of one of my screen prints? And I really haven't got... Got, I mean, they're just physical things, and yes. I need to go and take photographs of them, and then it won't. Yes. I have some slides, and yes. then the, even the slides being digitised, you know. Yes. So I have been working on quite a lot of archives through the GISC, yes. you know, looking at archives of different things, London College of Fashion, Central St. Martin Teaching Collection, um, various things. So I don't know about archiving, I just there's a limit to what I can do, really, you know. But I mean, I'm opening up all bags here. <laughs> okay, so in the exhibition for the Computer Art Society exhibition, um, I suppose I put one of my works in that I did in the late 60s, and it actually is there. Mm. But most of the work that, although it's 50 years of computer art and they are being computer artists, is more recent work. Mm. Mm. And is it the, is it, I mm, can't think of the word. I suppose mine is limited edition, I will never do any mm. more of it, and mm. it is, is of that time. Mm. Do you find with uh, displays of digital art that it's sometimes difficult to tell whether you're seeing uh, a genuine original or, or, or some sort of reprint? Well, the actual printing of them. I mean, if you think of somebody like Roman Voroshka, mm. who you know, who, who was you know an early pioneer, and, and he was, was a plotter, in this yeah, and he's a, you know plotter art. Mm. Those are real, mm. Mm. Um, but some of them are. are <coughs> reproductions of something they've done before mm. and I can't remember the name of one of the one of the art I mean I've got some work in the V&A collection and we we went there for something or other maybe either I don't know we went and looked at the thing and and one of the artists said oh you've got my work on on the web but it's very yellow can you change it to white in, in Photoshop <laughs> <laughs> and they went, no, because that's the colour of the paper now, which yes. makes it original. Yes. It was interesting, there was a, there was a Vera Molnar piece at this exhibition, and, and it, had, it, it, it had, had written on it, you know, print job for Ms Molnar at the top, you know, to mm. clearly be printed out on some machine somewhere. In the days when computers were run by the computer department and you weren't allowed in the room, you know, this sort yeah. of uh, batch jobs. And but, I mean, I will say that I... I, I can't remember how many years ago, but I did. I mean, I, when I when I when I had the contract with the gallery in in Bond Street, I worked with Advanced Graphics, who actually. I mean, usually I I print my own prints. Uh -huh. For the Advanced Graphics one, they got somebody else to print them for me. Uh -huh. 
Um, I had a contract with Christie's and I did four big editions for them as well, mm. but I printed those myself because mm. I, I print too many colours. Um, where am I going with this? Okay, so I am used to working with printers mm. printing my work, but it's a kind of much more, it's a, it's a, a relationship between mm. you know, the people printing it and the artist. It's not mm. press a button of a machine, mm. you know. But I, I, I won an, an, an award which was called um, the Gallery of the Future which Ernest Edmonds was involved in, it came from Loughborough University. And I worked with a, a, a master printer of an iris print, oh. which is now called Gicle, well, Gicle iris print. <coughs> and working with him was very similar to when I was working with a screen printer, you know. The calibration, he would, he would proof it for me, I would approve the colour, we'd work out the, the paper so that it was archival, the inks are all archival. And because I am a printmaker and I audition, I would be, all the values that I had as a printmaker, which mm. was decent paper, decent inks, um, uh, signed, mm. um, numbered, um, all those things I, I thought were really important to me. It wasn't just, cr you know, I mean, I, I, can't, I could just print from here, from my phone, I could print <coughs> yes. something up there, yes. but I haven't got any control over it. There are prints and prints, aren't there? And yeah. There's, there's obviously a difference between what you might call an artist print and a, a machine print. Yeah. Yes. In, in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the, the digital art world, who do you see as the sort of influencers, the gatekeepers? I mean, who decides, for instance, whether something goes on exhibition or whether something goes in the gallery? Oh, I, I look around, as you know, in many things. I've just been, I'm just about to do um, <coughs> SIGGRAPH Asia for Tokyo for mm -hmm. exhibition. Yeah. I'm on the digital arts community um, board as well, and we do a lot of online exhibitions, which I select for. Mm -hmm. I select for ISEA International. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, can't think of all the... I mean, I, I actually, you know, look at a lot of things, you know. Um, I'm actually a PhD supervisor for survivors as well for their um, practice-based PhDs. Um, who are the gatekeepers? I think they're more organisations than people. <coughs> I mean, I, I, I will, <coughs> I do curate exhibitions. I curated the William Nation Mutator <coughs> 1 and 2 at Phoenix. <coughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's kind of quite a difficult question. It, it actually yes. is a very small world. Yes, there don't seem to be very many uh, digital art galleries, do there, as no. such? Uh, well, I mean, the, the digital, you know, Wolfgang in... Yes. Yeah. Yes. That that's actually leads on to another thing I wanted to ask you about, and that is organisations. I mean, you've been connected with ICEA. You're the... Executive it, Director. Executive Director of ICEA. Uh, you've been connected with SIGGRAPH. You've been connected with the, the Digital Art Museum, DAM. That's Wolfgang, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And various others, I think, as well as... as well, well DAX, the, the, the Digital Arts Community, <laughs> which is yeah. ACM SIGGRAPH. Right. And I'm, I'm chair and I have a committee of the Lifetime Achievement in Digital Arts for ACM SIGGRAPH. Right. So I've, I've awarded <coughs> three awards. Right. Um, and I'm just about to award one in the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. to Monica Fleischmann, mm -hmm. um, Zena, um, Ernest Edmonds, mm -hmm. to name but a few. So, uh, I, I mean, I have a committee. I have a, the way that it works is that every, every two years I have a different selection committee mm -hmm. and we vote on who should get the Digital Arts Award um, and I'm, people suggest them to come through to me oh. and then we vote on them. Oh. So the 30 artists each year oh. go to my committee, which oh. I call them anonymous, but I think this year <laughs> apparently they decided they're going to tell everybody who they are, but anyway, that's something else. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, and that, that is interesting yes, and fascinating, yes. really, because I have to, you know, each one, if you suggested somebody to me, mm. and I have to set it up on the website for my committee to look at, I have to do a sort of troll around you, you know, mm. find out whether you're in Wikipedia, what's mm. your main thing is, you know, mm. and a little bit of blurb about you. Yes. So I kind of know, you know, and this is an historic thing, really, because a lot of people are going to die. <laughs> so yes. a lot of people are, are yes. getting elderly. Well, there certainly is that. And yes. then so somebody says, why aren't I there? I said, you're a bit too young. <laughs> <laughs> Could you explain to me the difference between uh, these bodies that we've been talking about, ICEA, the DAM, CAS and so on? No, I'm on lots of different committees. I'm probably too many and in actual fact I've got a conference call on Monday for the New Media Caucus um, group as the, on their advisory board. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason they want me there is because I've been around this 
neck of the woods for a long time and they're quite a new group quite young mm -hmm. um, and they just wanted some advice and some knowledge which mm -hmm. is what you are asking me for yes. about now mm -hmm. so I think in my role which I'm paid to do mm -hmm. um, which is um, 0.25 of my job yeah, um, um, is executive director of ISEA International. Mm -hmm. Now ISEA International started in, in the um, late 80s and it's had a regular symposium and it's nomadic and it works all over the world and so my role is to work with the symposium hosts and the board mm -hmm. Um, and to make sure that everything is in place and mm -hmm. that um, and I run a website mm -hmm. and I have um, Facebook you know, normal social media mm -hmm. things and I post things out regularly mm -hmm. but my m major role really is to work with all these symposiums mm -hmm. so the symposium that we just had was in Durban South Africa mm -hmm. about a month ago mm -hmm. and I usually work with them for about three or four years mm -hmm. so the next one is going to be in Guangzhou in South Korea for mm -hmm. 2019 and for um, 2020, it'll be Winnipeg. And we've got a big for 2021, which will be um, Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And I'm about to call out for 2022. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm working with the previous symposiums, mm -hmm. which is one was in Manizales in Colombia, which I think, I can, and so they become part of my family. I mm -hmm. work with them really closely. Mm -hmm. So as long as, so as, as well as having um, a major symposium where people present their research papers that are all peer-reviewed, um, anonymous, and, you know, uh, so they can be published as well. They're all published in the archives. We, we try and take over cities. Mm. So we try and make a difference in, in all the different locations that we go to. Okay, so you try and encourage it exhibitions on, on related lines in the city. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and they, each, each um, symposium has their own um, theme and sub-themes as mm. well. So the next one will be about light, which is um, Gongzhou, this is called the City of Light, and they've got various sub-themes in there. Um, and I say the one in Durban, um, we, I mean, they decided they really didn't want um, exhibitions in white walls, and they wanted a lot of kind of pop-up things in various different locations. So we, we were bussed around Durban, which was, which was really interesting. And also, we have workshops that are open for you know, people, students, member of the public, you know, um, teenagers, hackers, whatever, thinking about coding. So you bring in international figures who, who, who are happy to run workshops because that's the thing. So not only are, you, are we coming into cities and hopefully making a difference, we are actually also learning a lot from the different cities that we're in. So we, we had one in Dubai a few years ago, and I know a lot of the Americans had had never understood too much about about the Middle East and all the different areas in there and when they said oh it's going to be really scary and then they suddenly realized that it's not at all scary at all. Plenty of Americans in Dubai in my experience. <laughs> I know but you know what I mean yes, people have that kind of Very blinkered version yes. and we worked in a, an all-women's um, art, art and design college you know where mm -hmm. they you know they had the black headscarves and everything mm -hmm. um, but I think it was that exchange not only of knowledge um, and research, but also culturally as well, that we learn to respect each other's cultures, that you know we're not all the same, and we have different values, yes. which I think is really important. I mean, if you want to go to our symposium and you want it like it is at home, I don't think you should yeah, join yes. our gang. <laughs> you, you mentioned the word gang and you mentioned family as well. I mean, is it, is it basically the same group of people or similar group of people? Well, no, because we go all over the world, then I think it does change. Mm -hmm. So the people in Dubai, for example, were coming from Egypt, uh -huh. and Iraq and uh -huh. various, which we've never really picked uh -huh. up on. And the South African, we had quite a big contingent from the South African region as well. Uh -huh. You know, Sudan and uh -huh. I, I can't even name the other countries in, in South Africa. But um, so... I think, I mean, what I try and do, although it's, it, 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 it's not saying it's arbitrary, but, but try and make sure that, I mean, we, the countries we've used has been Hong Kong, mm. um, uh, Vancouver, um, Sydney, um, Dubai, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm. These are the ones I'm just remembering off the mm. top of my head, but they're all on the website there. Mm. So that is an interesting, um, yeah, I mean, the family, the, knowing each other, the networks, you know. Um, I think you'll never find an idea identical. No, no, no. <laughs> and does it sort of create 
lasting networks, or yes, does it, it does. all end when you move on to the next? No, I uh, mean, uh, not only does it lasting mm. networks of people working in mm. research areas, but I think because it's because it actually includes other universities within mm. cities, and I, mm. I think particularly of um, of the Emirates, you know, mm. so Dubai and Charger and. Um, I can't think of the other thing, but but they all work together, and they are still working together. Mm. Mm. Um, Abu Dhabi, that's the thing. So there's New York mm. University there. There's American University, the mm. University of Sharjah, um, and Suad University. Mm. And the, as colleagues, they they <coughs> met and they mm. really formed great friendships, and they're working on collaborative that's projects. You know, so that yeah. happened. Um, and yeah, yes, I, 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 I think. I, I can't really explain it, really. <laughs> you, you also mentioned the, the, the DAM, the Digital Art Museum. That, yeah. That's an online museum run by a German university, isn't it? No. Uh, or no, it's run by Wolfgang's. Oh, right, OK. The, uh, the Digital Arts Museum, yeah. Mm. He started it in... <coughs> oh, when did he start it? Maybe... Ooh, I don't know, time goes by. Mm. But sometime in the late 90s, I think, and he started to, to archive pioneer work, mm. and it's on there. But it, he ran out of money, and mm. I put in for an, for an AHRB award, which mm. I didn't get, so we stopped doing that. Mm. But there are quite a lot of significant archives as well. Mm. We have the archives for ISEA. You do the, you know, mm. um, so I, start, I, I did get an, a research award for that, mm. and I found out where all the conference proceedings mm. is, and everything's up there. Um, could do with a little bit of kind of thing. But you, you mentioned SIGGRAPH. Now, mm. I've been going to SIGGRAPH for many years, mm. um, and I used to work in the art gallery. And the art gallery used to have open submissions for the art gallery. Mm. And I was art gallery chair in 2004, and I had a committee, and I had 120 artists in that exhibition. Wow. Um, <clears throat> over, over the period of time, things mm. change, and they decided that the art gallery would no longer be uh, open submissions. Mm. It, would, it would actually be um, somebody would actually <coughs> curate it mm. and, and choose the artist. And I'm going to Vancouver in a mm. few weeks' time, and I think there'll probably be eight to ten artists in there. From, from being a very big organisation. Mm. But the reason mine was big was because I had animation, I had web-based mm. work, I had um, 2D work, mm. and I had small installation. Mm. Interactive installations have become the trend, mm. and there are not that many places that you can do it. No. And that's why, mm. you know, the relationship with emerging technologies and the art gallery of SIGGRAPH are really important. But SIGGRAPH, like I see it, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that just an... Uh, one conference annually held in different yeah. places around the world. Yeah, but you will. But there are three three places. Oh, okay. They've cut it down now. Right. So it's either um, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. up, um, Anaheim, mm -hmm. or Vancouver. Right. Always on the U.S. the American continent. Yeah, American continent. but they do have SIGGRAPH Asia, which I was about to mm -hmm. say. SIGGRAPH Asia has got uh, an open call. Mm -hmm. So SIGGRAPH Asia this year will be in Tokyo, and then it'll be in um, Darwin in mm -hmm. Australia in the year before. And I'm actually on, on the uh, um, art gallery committee mm -hmm. for both of those, so I would select and things. Um, because um, <coughs> all, all they decided, you know, that, that it meant that because there weren't that many artists in the art gallery anymore, that SIGGRAPH were losing their artists, because why would they come? Mm -hmm because it's expensive to come. Mm -hmm. um, they set up a thing called the Digital Arts Community, mm -hmm. which is an online community. Um, and it's web-based, so mm -hmm. everybody can have their own um, portfolio of work. Mm -hmm. um, it, but what we have done is curated some online exhibitions. Or sometimes um, <coughs> we, we uh, select the theme, but we curate it mm -hmm. ourselves. An, an online exhibition, now. You know, it's easy to say, but what is it in fact? What it is, what it is, what it's on, it, on, the, on the tin. It, it's, it's a website yeah. on which people's artworks, assuming that they can be displayed online, are displayed online. Yeah. yeah. And, ha and we, we had a VR one actually quite <coughs> recently. Mm. Yeah. I mean, looking at, looking at um, um, Lumen, for instance, they, they seem to uh, they exist in a, uh, almost in a, in a limbo between, on the one hand, works that can be shown online, and on the other hand, works that can't where they tend to sort of, as I understand it, help galleries to, to 
get the technology to demonstrate the, the, these works. Mm. Um, if, if, if you just have an online gallery, are you limiting yourself to certain types of work? Yeah. Uh, well, surprisingly, and I, you know, a year of little faith, when they were going to do the VR one, I thought it would never work, but it did. Because I think the new technologies are getting quite, you know, you can use <coughs> augmented yes. reality on a screen. It doesn't yes, necessarily... So I think as long as the themes are there and they're relevant for people, then people can have access things to, to things that, that they can't necessarily go all the way to London or, or New York or whatever, and they actually can participate and actually look at and use for their teaching and learning as well. I mean, the other problem with online exhibitions is anybody or his dog can put up an online exhibition, and that indeed they do, yeah. and there are a lot of them. How, how, mm. how does the public sort between them? Well, it's funny you should say that, because I, I you know, in my research thing, when I was a re I still am a researcher, but on my own, rather than in, in, in a thing, is that um, Beryl Graham, who kind of interesting person you may want to talk to about, um, she... Were they, were, I can't remember it quite how, but it, it was that. It's like if everybody can put their art, mm. how, who's to say what is art or something mm. like that? And, and, and this is really in the early 90s, so, so we'd already thought of that mm. one. <laughs> well, I mean, every artist seems to have a website these days. And yeah. they, they often are quite technically enterprising websites and show quite a lot of their work as, as, as well as you might see it in an online mm. gallery. I know, and, and in a way I say that to my students. I say, you know, I'm giving you this, this is, this is a, a call for whatever and nobody knows if you're a student or not. I mean the things that I do find difficult as, as, a, as a reviewer of things, particularly installations, is whether it's achievable because you can write some wonderful idea about you know I'm going to laser beam this up to the moon and back again you know That's I don't know. exploding building. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Brilliant you know, so <laughs> I and although quite often it's anonymous, it's surprising how you can find out quite yes, easily yes. by just doing a Google search or something, you know, when I yeah. say that. Because it has to be achievable, you know. Yes, yes. Because yes. um, you can have all sorts of kind of high polluting ideas. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it, it's, it's a very difficult question, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it does seem to be one of the, the... The distribution is one of the more interesting ways in which digital stuff is changing art, mm. I think. Mm. Um, can we... Uh, Come on to the, the CAS, who, after all, are Computer Arts Society, okay. the, the reason be, behind this, this interview. Um, you, you've been a member of the CAS and a member of its uh, manage, managing committee for some time, I think. How do you how do you see the importance of the CAS? What do you see as its its main contribution? Well, I mean, I love the fact that it's been around a long time, mm. but it was very male dominated, as we know, because it was mainly a computer people who got yes. to work within computer yes. science. Yes. Um, and, and as I said in, my, in this interview earlier, you know, I had to find my way in the, into the computer world in spite of everybody, you know, um, which was, was fine. I mean, kind of worked out in, in, in a way. Um, so I only joined the Computer Arts Society when it had it re, reinvigorated itself. I, I don't know when, sort of in the 90s or something, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it depends how you define it, I suppose. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I used to like... I mean, it... it Different people are on the committee mm. and different people are running it. And I, I did like going to people's talks up mm. in London, although because it was up in London, I live in Brighton, it mm. doesn't take me very long to mm. go up there. Mm. And that was interesting. Mm. They seem to have less of that at the moment. Mm. And then obviously they have the EVA as well mm. that's connected with them. Um, and then, you know, we, we're doing the Computer Arts Society exhibition in Leicester, which mm. I had some work in. And now I'm working with... with um, Nick and Sean for the, in fact, that's in my to-do list for today, is, is an exhibition at Phoenix, Brighton, because I used to be on, I used to be chair of it at one point, a co-chair actually, and we're going to have the exhibition that was in Leicester in, in, in Phoenix in September as part of um, Brighton Digital Festival. And some of the Lunar work will be in the main gallery as well. And one of my XMA students is showing some work, so it should be quite a good digital exhibition, mm. really. Mm. Um, but this will be 2D work, and I was getting criticised about, you know, why aren't you having, you know... Uh, and mm. I said, well, you know, if it's early work, then it will be to only mm. 2D, mm. and it's actually easier to put it work on than yes. some complicated okay. installation that you yes. have to have somebody to, to look at. I mean, one of the things that... Uh, you haven't asked me this question, but um, Alex May, I don't know whether you've come across him, but no, man. Mm. He, um, a couple of weeks ago when Eva was on, he had an exhibition 
he, he was commissioned to do some work for the Crick, which is just by King's Cross. Right. Um, <coughs> and it's an ongoing interactive installation in the window. Mm. I mean, you, I, I, I'm not going to d totally describe it, but we mm -hmm. can give some more information about that if you need. But he has to guarantee that it's going to work for three years. Because a lot of this work, <laughs> and I know, as you know, we were talking about, you know, selecting yes, work. Yes. Selecting work and putting it up for SIGGRAPH or for ISEA. <clears throat> um, I mean, SIGGRAPH and ISEA are usually just a week. Mm. People come in and put it up and it flies away. Mm. Um, there was one um, ISEA which was held in the major museum in Albuquerque. Mm where the guy who was in charge of the gallery there wanted to, to do this digital book, but he wanted it on for two months. Mm. Um, and he curated things in like a Nam June Pike and different things like that. And when I got there, I was sort of part of the selection committee and I'd been, I always do a pre-visit to wherever it's going to be just to talk to people and just talk to, because I'm sort of the linchpin. I know how it should work, if you put it that way. And yes. it's also useful to meet the people and to look yes. at the, the, you know, the places where they're going to show artwork and where they're going to show the thing. Um, and he, when I got in, he said, but Sue, they said they've never ever had their artwork last ever more than a week. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an old joke about, about uh, Kinetic art uh, displays, isn't it? It's best to go on the first day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, f I found here, because I'm in this room where my students have just finished doing, doing their exhibition, Insight, mm. um, and I said, you know, you need to turn off and turn on, and you have to turn up on time, mm -hmm. you know, because if you went all the way up to mm -hmm. the, to the tape and, and they decided that it was a bit wet or you were mm -hmm. feeling a bit sick and they didn't open mm -hmm. the door, you know, because yes. there is a commitment to this work, exactly. you know. Yes. The commitment is not just putting it up, not no. just thing, but there may be a commitment to making sure that it works for, for, long, for yes. a certain amount of longevity. And all this kit goes out of date, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm say these people are asking me for some of these images and for a start they're on a CD and I haven't got any way of playing CDs or a zip drive mm. you know mm. um, USB even, even my laptop doesn't use USBs <laughs> it is it's a constant problem isn't it I, I, and, and yes I mean I, one of the questions I often ask people is how, how, how do you see the next 50 years and one, one very good answer could be more compatible devices so <laughs> every USB relates to every other and the sort of thing. Thank you, thank you very much, Sue. That's, That's right. extremely helpful and very interesting. <laughs>